The stairway ceiling of one of Belize's most historical buildings collapsed this morning, and now the magistrate's courthouse has been rendered almost completely unusable. And while the building had already been contending with leaky roofs and mold, Hurricane Lisa amplified the problem, ripping off the roofs and flooding the courtrooms. And according to Chief Magistrate Sharon Fraser, the collapse of the ceiling was just a matter of time. I remember talking to the security saying, oh my goodness, I feel like this dome is going to collapse. It, it was moving further away from the building. What I'm grateful about for is the fact that nobody was around when it collapsed. And then government would have had to be addressing somebody getting hurt as a result of the collapse. The constant rain, um, the damage itself from Hurricane Lisa, the constant rain now, would have caused us to be where we are today. Um, what is the present position? The present position is that the Chief Justice has given instructions that until a declaration is made as, as far as the safety of the building, that um, she doesn't necessarily want anybody in the building. Who did the assessment for this building? The I know that there was a structural engineer who came initially. I wasn't a part of that, so I can't speak to that. I can tell you that there were members of the Ministry of Infrastructure who came and did a walkthrough. So they went upstairs, they came down here, and now they were to come back to look at, to, to look at the extent of the damage, put pen on paper and, and do all of that. So that is still pending. But did they consider that the magistrate's court might face this problem of flooding? They were aware because the engineer and the building supervisor who came from, from the Ministry of Infrastructure looked at it and saw the, the water that came down in the court that has had the most significant damage. So they went in there, they looked, they took down the light fixture to, to let out water that was in there. So, so yes, they would have, but with a view that they would have been able to come back because at that point it was just simply a walkthrough. But court reporter Anita Nemhard says she's witnessed firsthand the slow deterioration of the courthouse and was shocked to see the damage in the area where she normally stands up to do her work. To be honest, um, I was, it was unbelievable, you know. Um, I had predicted that if this, the roof was not dealt with, that come Monday, that this inner portion that, that is gone would have been gone over the weekend because I realized that the weather was calling for more rain. And I was doing my only everyday surveillance of where I work every day. Someone who understands how important the justice system is, do you feel like this should have been taken care of at the, at the, in the early days after the hurricane or maybe even before? The hurricane came. That is definitely an understatement because I have, from, from my 20 years being out here, I've seen this building deteriorate, but I understand the, the, the historical significance of this building. And I always said that it's good that when they do a little touch up, but it needed more than just a touch up. But as the chief magistrate put it, they could only repair what their budget allowed them to do, and that an overhaul of the building was not within their means. I know that in fact, as far as leaking roof is concerned, Efforts were done. If you notice in the front of the building, from a distance in the front of this building, new zincs were replaced, right? Particularly in the area that holds the, the Chief Justice, new zincs were replaced. So it's not that the building were being ignored. It is just that a building of this nature, of this size, would have deserved considerable amount of resources. We've been addressing it as best as we can with the kind of budget we have. And now, while arraignments were held this morning, trials have been suspended. And the court system is not looking for a temporary home to conduct its business. Because, as Fraser said, the ceiling is not a simple fix. I'm hoping that um, it will be addressed. I know that it would not be any time soon that we'll be able to say this building will be fixed. We're hoping to find temporary, a temporary home, at least, at very least, for the courts that have been affected and continue serving the public as best as we can. But we know justice delayed is justice denied. 
So with that said, and with the government knowing the condition of the court, even before the hurricane, and especially now that the hurricane passed, it passed three weeks ago, do you feel, and CJ is just, had just visited yesterday, do you feel like she should have visited earlier, the government should have moved earlier because of how important this service is to the public? The Chief Justice was aware of the, of the issue of the damages, and I can tell you that the Attorney General was also made aware of the damages, and I know that, in fact, she had indicated that the Ministry of Infrastructure was to come and do an assessment with how we move forward. This is not just like a home that you can just go and put on new zinc or whatever the case may be. It's a historical building, so even as it relates to simple repairs, one has to go through a whole different process than if it's just an ordinary building. For now, the magistrates using the four affected courtrooms will have to rotate use of the rooms that did not sustain damages. And Frazier believes the ceiling on the right-hand portion of the building may collapse before repairs can be done. Courtney Menzies, 7 News.